Hi, my name is Jason with LaunchSystemStore.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do the programming on the Simon XTI-5 alarm system. It's a touchscreen system, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, but I'll run you through all the steps so you can see how exactly it works. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can win some more stickers. Uh, these are great to put up on your window, things like that. It lets people know that your house is protected by an alarm system. And it's a great deterrent. So let's go ahead and go to the table and we'll get started on the programming. Alright, the first thing I'll show is how to do the wiring and put in the back of the battery. Now it is a wireless system, so there's not much wiring, you just need to get power to it from the AC. So this transformer comes with the system. It's an AC transformer. I'm not sure if you'll be able to read the writing on here, but it's a 9 volt AC 25 VA power transformer. It comes with the system. And you'll just wire your uh, power wire to one wire to each terminal. There's no positive or negative, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. And then uh, you'll need to get the face plate. So this has a face plate around the outside off. Uh, in the bottom right corner, you'll see this little notch. Now, some of them are a little bit tighter than others, but I recommend just getting a screwdriver and prying it open just a little bit. Uh, once you get enough open in there it's fairly easy to pull off. So there's your face plate, comes right off, set that to the side. So now the system has a hinge on the bottom so you'll open it from the top. There's two little tabs here uh, they don't have any screws in it or anything and they're not real tight so it doesn't take much to pull that open. And then the system just pulls right off the hinge. You just lift it right off. So then you can take your uh, back plate and mount it to the wall. Uh, nothing too difficult. And you'll want to run your AC wire, uh, preferably through the wall, but it, it's not critical. Uh, if you don't run it through the wall, it won't necessarily lay as flat on the wall, so it's a little bit nicer if you can, but basically you'll just want to run your AC wire through the back of the back plate, just like that. And then there's some terminals right here, and these terminals are labeled. Uh, the first three are for hardwired inputs, or uh, actually can be used for an output as well, depending on how you program. These last two, or the bottom two, are for 9 volt AC in. They're both labeled exactly the same. Again, there's no positive or negative. It's AC input, so it doesn't matter. So you'll take your AC wires, put them under those terminals, uh, one under each, screw that down. Now the backup battery uh, comes with the system as well. And the way it'll go in here is you'll put it under the two tabs. And then this last tab, it'll just push down and it'll snap into place. The connector here uh, can only go into this terminal one way. Uh, but the easy way to remember which way to go is you'll want this clip up. So you'll put the clip up and it slides right into place. Now you can connect the backup battery before you connect your AC because the system will not power up solely from the backup battery. If the system's already powered up, the backup battery will keep it running for a while, but it's not going to power the system up if it's shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and get the AC put back in, uh, get this all closed back up, and then we'll get started with uh, programming. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is default the system. So uh, let's say, you know, I'm trying to take over the system. Maybe you had somebody install it for you. Maybe uh, you're moving locations, whatever. And either to get into programming or you just want to get rid of all the programming that's already in there, you want to reset it back to factory defaults. So to do that, uh, it's not too hard. Now you can see I already have the faceplate off just to save time, but 
first thing you do is take this faceplate off. Next thing you'll do is unplug the AC. Now the system is not going to shut down when you unplug the AC. So uh, what you'll actually need to do is open it up. And you can just let it hang on the hinge there. And you'll want to unplug the backup battery. So now you can see system is shut down. So now that it's shut down, next step we'll do is take a small screwdriver or paper clip, pen, whatever you want. There's a button right here, and it actually says on the plastic embossed reset. It's real hard to see. I doubt you'll be able to see it on the camera. I can barely see it now. So you'll push that button down and then plug the AC back in. Once the AC is plugged back in, release the button. So now the system is back to factory defaults. This will reset all your sensor information, all of your access codes, everything. So once you have that done, you want to open it back up, plug your battery back in, and then close it. And put your faceplate back on. The faceplate just snaps on pretty easy, just like that. So now that the system is defaulted, uh, the first thing you're going to do is go to this bottom right corner and touch the gear icon. So this is the status and settings menu. So there's a whole bunch of different options in here. A lot of it will be good to go through. But uh, for what we're going to do, you're just going to scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see programming. When you go into here, it's going to ask for an access code. It only gives you a little bit of time, so it's probably going to time out, just like that. Um, but you'll want to make sure you use your programming code. If you don't use the programming code, uh, the system either will not go into any menu, if you just use a regular user code, or an incorrect code. Or if you use the master code, it'll go into a much uh, more abbreviated menu. It's basically designed uh, so that only people with the programming code can make the major system changes. Only people with the master code can make uh, minor changes like adding access codes and things like that. So let's go in here. The default installer code is 4321. Obviously if you changed it from that you'll use whatever you change it to. So you type that in, push OK. So this is the system programming menu. Uh, there's 12 sub menus in here. Uh, a lot of these you really don't need to even go into uh, for most cases. Access codes uh, is one that you'll probably need to do. We're going to do a separate video on access codes, so for now we'll just skip that. First one that we're going to be worried about is sensors. Alright, so in sensor you're going to see three options. Learn sensor, edit sensor, delete sensor. These are pretty... Uh, self-explanatory. Obviously we, if we touch edit sensor or delete sensor right now we have no sensors programmed you're gonna get an empty screen. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is learn sensors into the system. So we'll touch there. Now it says trip new sensor. Now you can uh, check your install sheets and product sheets to know exactly how to do it but it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can either do a tamper uh, or for a door contact you can open and close just like that pretty easy if it was a motion detector or glass break you'll want to tamper it smoke detector same thing so now on this menu we get three options here sensor number so this is the zone number uh, it'll automatically go to the next available one but you can edit it with the edit key here and type in or scroll to whatever number you want. We're just going to keep it on sensor 1, that's fine. Sensor group is the second one here. Now this one you'll want to refer to your manual for sure on, because uh, unless you have it memorized, you're not going to know what 10 means, you're not going to know what 13 means, etc. So the system itself comes with a small installation manual. This is just like a quick install guide that Interlogix has made for it. 
And on the front here, it actually has a pretty useful table for this. Uh, so it's sensors and recommended sensor groups. So it has some part numbers that you can go by, uh, but also kind of the device type. So this is going to be, let's say it'll be living room window. So it's a door and window sensor, and the recommended sensor group is 13. Now, it doesn't really say exactly what 13 means in this. If you want to know exactly, you'll want to actually go to the full install guide that is available online on the Analogics website. You can search for it in Google, uh, or we'll put a link to it in the description here. And so there's actually a big table. It's two pages long, and it goes through every sensor type number. Uh, the name and application, the siren type, uh, if it has a delay, so it'll do, uh, you know, if it's an instant alarm or not, uh, restoral, supervised, and arming, in active arming levels. So uh, let's go to 13, since that's what we think we need. So this is an instant perimeter, exterior doors and windows, it's for intrusion. It's an instant delay, uh, yes and yes for restoral and supervise, and it's active in arming levels 2 and 4. So that's you know what you need to know about that. And for a living room window, uh, that's probably what you'll want to do. An instant perimeter uh, for is generally what's used on all exterior windows. So once you have 13 entered, you'll hit save. And now the sensor name. So we decided we're going to use uh, living room window for this. So let's go ahead and go to edit. Now it gives you all sorts of different options here, uh, depending on which sensor you want to edit. We're just going to go to front door. And so now it has a bunch of different uh, pre-made labels. So living room window is actually on there, but you can scroll through and see all of them. Uh, if you want to use living room window, you just touch that, it'd appear right there. But you can also use the keypad. So the next thing you want to do is go to edit sensor name, touching edit. Now it's going to actually give you the full list here. So item two uh, is your second available hardware zone, so it's always going to show up even if it's not programmed. But we were doing item one, front door uh, is what it's currently on, so we'll hit edit. And it gives you a whole list here that you can actually just scroll through. Uh, if you wanted, you could go to the keypad and enter the number yourself. But let's scroll down and see what we can find. Living room window. So that's exactly what we want. So we'll just touch that and hit save. Now most likely you'll be able to find what you want in that list. So uh, it's a pretty extensive list. Uh, once you have that done, you just hit close. And then you're just going to hit save. So then it's going to go back to trip sensor and you can move on to your next zone and your next and your next, etc. Once you're done, you'll hit close. If you wanted to make any changes, you could go to edit sensor and you'll see a summary of your devices. So we have sensor 01, it's group 13, it's named living room window. If you wanted to edit it, we could. Or if you wanted to delete one, pretty easy. Same thing, except there's a delete button. So once you're done with that, you're just going to close out. All right, now the last thing that we really need to do uh, for sure is change the timers. So let's go to timers. Now there's a whole bunch in here. You can even scroll down. But the main thing we're looking at is this entry delay and exit delay. So it shows the defaults 30 seconds for the entry delay, 60 seconds for the exit delay. 
Uh, that's pretty standard to have the exit delay a little bit longer just to make sure you can get out of the house in time without accidentally setting the alarm off. Whereas the entry delay, you want to kind of make that as short as possible uh, while still giving yourself t enough time to disarm. That way somebody that breaks in is going to have as little as possible of time to do anything before the siren starts sounding the system calls out to central station or you or whoever. So uh, let's change the entry delay. Let's say we want to do uh, 60 seconds. Maybe it's uh, not right by a door. Maybe we have to walk from the front door to the kitchen. It's going to take a little bit of time. So we'll do 60 seconds and hit save. And the exit delay, like I said, I like to do it a little bit longer. But you'll definitely want to do it at least as long as your longest entry delay. But we're going to go with 90 seconds. Just to give us an extra 30 seconds to get out of the house. We'll hit save. And then close. So at this point, uh, if if I had programmed in you know, more than just one window sensor, the system would be uh, completely programmed for uh, the basic programming. Obviously access codes would need to be done, but we'll cover that in a different video. So once you're done with all your programming, you'll hit close. And now you can see uh, we do have a window sensor and it's showing open. Uh, that's because there's a tamper on the back of this that it's not heavy enough to keep closed. Uh, but I can close it by hand. And then it's easy enough just to open it, close it. Shows you the system status right there on the front screen. Pretty nice. Uh, so that's really all there is to the programming. All right, guys, I hope you get found that really helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, as always, subscribe to our channel to help us get the word out about DIY security. And like I said, you can win some of these stickers on this video. Uh, we're giving you a week from the posting date of this video to comment below. Uh, if there's up to five people, we'll win these stickers. If there's more than that, we'll pick five random people. So uh, you don't have to be the first one. Uh, you have the same amount of chance to be the first or the last. So... Each person that wins will get five of these. I will mail them right out to you. Now, you do have to be in the United States, obviously, for us to be able to send them. We're not going to ship uh, internationally or anything like that. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.